Hey y'all, Jamie here with Country Diggers. I'm back with part two of the history of the cast iron stoves, except this one is miniature cast iron stoves that kids can cook on. They're toys, that, but they're some that kids can cook on. And um, I'll just show you a miniature I have right here. It's a small miniature. I think it's a salt and pepper shaker. It's not, you can't cook in this one. <laughs> But I think it is a salt and pepper shaker, a pot bellied cast iron stove. And I think this one might have come off a uh, kid's cast iron stove, might have been part of it. This is, um, it's got the little notches where you could set it down and put a skillet on top, maybe, or some kind of pan or something. But it's the owl. And I think it might come off of kids. I'm not sure. But I will be reading from the Chimong County Historical Society. It's a blog post. And um, the name of it is A Tragic History of Tiny Stoves by Erin Dohan. And she's a curator of this museum and writer of this post. A right. Tragic History of Tiny Stoves. Children love to pretend to cook. That's not surprising as food is such a huge part of our lives. I remember making mud pies, milkweed pod, uh, pickles, and pizza out of a piece of wood covered in sawdust cheese. I grew up at a lumber mill. Some of my luckier friends actually had easy bake ovens so they could really bake. I had one too, but I couldn't bake. I baked mud pies is what I baked. Kitchen toys have been around for longer than some of us can imagine. In the 19th century, girls played with toy stoves to help them learn their duties as a housewife. Miniature cast iron stoves, which very closely resembled the real thing, are very pop were very popular by the 1890s. No child's playroom was complete without a real little kitchen, including a toy stove. Some were just toys that children could pretend to cook on, while others were functional. In 1892, the Marshall Field and Company catalog had a listing for a toy stove that could actually be used for cooking. Some hot coals could be put inside it to heat it up. The miniature stove pictured below from the museum's collection has some sooty residue inside, which means it was probably used like that at one time or another. Now I put pictures up so you can see. You might think that giving a child a working stove may be a bad idea, and you would be correct. My research into toy stoves took a dark turn when I found a story in April of uh, April 23rd, 1890, the Rome Daily Sentinel reporting on how some children in Utis tipped over a tiny stove and set their two-story frame house ablaze. That made me wonder if it was common for children's toy stoves to set things on fire. Unfortunately, it appears that it was. I did not find stories of accidental toy stove fires in Ch Chimon County, but there were some there were many more from around the state and region. Now, I guess this is I don't know where this is from right now. I'll have to look where the, where Chimon County is. I don't know. Um, but there were many more from around the state and region. In 1897, in New Brunswick, New Jersey, a two-year-old left alone at home was playing with matches and a toy stove. She set her clothes on fire and burned to death. That's not a good story. In 1909, a six-year-old in St. Louis, Missouri, lit a fire in her toy stove with a coal oil, with coal oil. 
the stove exploded, setting her dress on fire. Both her mother and father were injured, trying to extinguish the flames, and the child died of her burns. There were two reported cases of toy stove fires in New York, just days apart in 1915. A two-month-old burned to death in her crib after her three-year-old sister started a fire with her toy stove. Another five-year-old girl, Edna May Frost, died when she tried to heat up some milk on her toy stove to feed her new baby doll. You can read all the sad, terrible details of both incidents in the article below, and I'll read I'll read it when I'm done with this one, this article. Um, these kinds of accidents keep appearing in newspapers through the 1920s. In 1921, three little girls are playing with a new toy stove and iron they just received for Christmas. The youngest, three-year-old Lillian, tried to put some paper into the stove and her clothes caught on fire. Marion, who was five years old, and Gertrude, seven, tried to put out the flames but also caught fire. An older sister came to their rescue, but Lillian died from her burns. An opinion article that appeared in the Watertown Daily Times in 1923 called for the manufacture and sale of toy stoves to be prohibited because of all these fires. The writer argued that children naturally wanted to emulate the adults around them. They would find ways to start fires in their stoves as they saw their mothers do in their real kitchens, no matter how careful the parents were. A ban on the toys could, only, could be the only solution. The instances of fires and deaths caused by toy stoves decreased through, early, through the early 20th century. There could have been because of some sort, that could have been because of some sort of crackdown on the sales of the toys. It could have also been because of the introduction of electric toy stoves around 1915. Girls no longer needed fire to heat their stoves. They simply plugged them in and the tiny stoves and range tops would come up to temperature. By the late 1930s, parents were adding electrical outlets to their children's playrooms so they could plug in their, to their new toy stoves. Yeah, and uh, cause a... <laughs> Oh, me. But anyway, uh, the article of that says, Girl cooking at toy stove for her doll burned to death. Clothing and nights and she inhales flames in another home. In another home, baby in crib perishes in fire. A little girl was burned to death yesterday while preparing a meal on a toy stove for her new doll, and a baby was burned to death in her crib. Edna May Frost, five years old, had been pre prevented by illness from marching in the Brooklyn Sunday School Parade and to emulate, em oh, to, uh, uh, this is hard to see, to emulate, em Immorialate her disappointment. Her mother had purchased a new doll for her. The child took the took a toy stove to the yard in the rear of the house at uh, Prospect Avenue, Brooklyn, and with matches and paper made a fire in it. Soon the neighbors heard the child scream and saw her run with her dress blazing into the street. Several women pursued her with pails of water, and a man seized Edna and wrapped his coat about her. By that time, she had inhaled the flames. She was hurried to the Holy Family Hospital, where she soon died. Mrs. Gertrude Fermel left her daughter, Famona, three years old, 
and her baby Rose, two months old, in her apartment on the third floor at number 311 East 48th Street yesterday while she went to the store. When she returned, she found her rooms ablaze. She rescued Fanona, but the flames drove her back from the cradle containing the baby. She tried to go through the fire, but neighbors held her back. When the fire was extinguished, the burned body of the baby was found. That's so sad. Um, so sad. But, um, hope you enjoyed and see you back soon.